you know, th things happen and we kind of got taken out of that spot. You know, we saw uh, Cesaro and Shinsuke kind of get put into our spot. And of course they win the tag titles. So yeah. it, 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 it makes you think like, oh man, if we would have stayed there, that, that could have been us type thing. What's up, Bengal fans? It's your host, Joey Carney. And I want to thank you for clicking on this video. It was an amazing experience and I can't wait for you to watch the full episode and enjoy it just as much as I did filming it. Now, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe down below to stay up to date with all the angles activity right here on YouTube. Now enjoy the show. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Angle Podcast. As always, I am your host, Joey Carney, and with me today, he is a former NXT Tag Team Champion. You may know him as Wesley Blake. We are going to introduce him now as Weston Blake. How are you? And welcome to the show. Uh, thanks for having me on, man. It's an honor to be here. Thank you for having me on the show. Yeah, it's going very well. I appreciate you uh, taking the time, and I know it's been a, a whirlwind of a year for everybody. Uh, yeah. But for you specifically, there's a lot of things to talk about. So I do want to jump in to start uh, talking about your time in NXT and when you yep. were first signed. Uh, you portrayed a cowboy character and ultimately yep. transformed, uh, uh, transitioned out of that role. What did they tell you uh, when you first, or what did you expect when you first signed with NXT? So when you first get in with NXT at that time, you uh, it was the Performance Center was just opening up. Uh, that's when they kind of launched the Performance Center and everything and, and they're you know they've been going to full self for quite some time and you know when you first get there you just kind of want to get your niche or get get out there somehow just get in front of a crowd in front of tv and stuff like that so mm -hmm. i was doing the cowboy gimmick um because i did that at my tryouts in 2012 um i cut my promos and stuff like that wearing a cowboy hat and kind of uh, more dressed up as a cowboy and you know, and, and when I left there, and I, you know, I, I realized like, oh man, um, you know, there's not, there's not any cowboys, there's not any kind of cowboy characters at that time in NXT, and I think that, I thought that would have been a, a good way to kind of get um, on TV quicker and stuff like that. So, yeah, when I got to NXT in 2013, uh, that was kind of my niche and kind of going with it, and it, it got me on live events, you know. Uh, after about three months of kind of like searching for names and stuff like that and, and cutting promos and it, it kind of helped me at, out uh, cutting promos wise because I can leave with a, with a one line saying or something like that. And, and so it was just kind of like trying to find your groove in NXT. And there's of course a lot of, uh, a lot of, a lot of talented people, and, uh, you know, so getting on TV was uh, quite scarce and it was hard, and especially as a new face there. And uh, yeah, after probably about, I want to say about six or seven months of doing that, they kind of, I kind of got the impression or was told that like, uh, hey, Vince McMahon doesn't really like uh, Cowboys. Uh, he thinks it's kind of overdone, uh, especially in the wrestling business and stuff like that. So we're um, we going to kind of have to like switch up your character. So you're going to have to start pitching some more ideas on character wise and, you know, kind of getting to know you a little bit better. And so I did. I, I went through a, a phase where I kind of uh, kind of uh, started the transitioning of, of trying uh, trying new stuff out. Um, me and uh, at the time uh, Camacho Camacho was down there in NXT for a little bit. I pitched me and him doing a tag together. We even did some live events together where we tagged and had some cohesiveness. Yeah. And um, I believe at that time. Uh, Adam Rose was kind of on a roll, roll and uh, I, I was at, at kind of his first get over match. And then the kind of the first um, like takeover, um, Adam Rose was uh, going to wrestle Camacho. So we try to integrate that uh, storyline into where we would become a tag team. Um, but ultimately, Camacho kind of got let go. And so I kind of had to hit the drawing board again uh, with uh, creative pitches and stuff like that. I, I I tried to introduce uh, a cop character and uh, I was trying to uh, almost be as like the big boss man's son or, you know, or a distant nephew or something like that. And I was trying to, you know, just trying anything and everything to kind of throw at the wall 
um, at that time. And uh, eventually it was not until um, the coach or the commentator at that time, Matt Bloom, who's the head coach now, um, he was coaching at that time and doing commentary work. He uh, was the one that brought it to me like, hey, maybe you should tag with Buddy Murphy. And, um, you know, I, mean, I was all for it. Me and Buddy, we, we had a great uh, friendship when we, we met back at the tryout in 2012. Yeah. So we, yeah, so we, uh, you know, and at the time I just said, yeah, I didn't think really much of it. And then that night at promo class when I was with Dusty, Dusty brought it up to me like, hey, come back tomorrow and cut, uh, cut a promo with Buddy Murphy. We just kind of want to see you two in front of the camera together to kind of see y'all's look. And um, and that's what we did. I, I left that place and called Buddy and uh, cut the promo the next day. I, I can't even remember what it was about or anything, <laughs> but uh, me and him just kind of got in front of the camera. And um, then that weekend we were on live events down in Florida and, and we started, um, you know, we had a natural chemistry together, whether that us just being friends or uh, and it kind of all played in together, kind of our drive and passion. How, you know, once they kind of gave us something to run with, you know, if you give us an inch, we take it a mile type thing. So yeah. we really started, um, really started going um, all in with uh, with the tag team with Buddy and myself. Of course, and uh, I've always seen, or whenever I've talked to to guys and girls that have been who have experienced WWE, they always talk about how pitching ideas can sometimes be like an uphill battle. Did you ever see, like, was that the same for you? Was it an uphill battle uh, in t- to pitch different ideas, to go to creative, uh, whether in NXT or in WWE? Um, and then I wouldn't say an uphill battle. I, 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 I can see if people, um, like, if I, was, if I was stuck on an idea, like, hey, you know, if yeah. I was like, hey, I want to be a cowboy, I want, and, and if they kept telling me, like, no, this, that, or the other, I could see where it can kind of be uh, frustrating on, on both ends um, of the spectrum there. But I, when, you know, when they told me to switch it up, I mean, I had no problem. It, it just kind of gets into my creative juices a little bit more, like, okay, yeah. what, what else can I do? What else can I pitch? Um, so for me, it was that, it was almost like a challenge factor. Like, okay, well, if that's not going to work, like, Hey, maybe I'll try to make this work, or maybe I'll try to get, um, a character idea over this way and that type of stuff. So, uh, it, it wasn't, like I said, it wasn't almost, a, an uphill battle. It was just more of like little, uh, challenges that you would, um, that you would kind of go through, which I think everyone kind of goes through, or at least I did yeah. in my career. Of, of just uh, trying to portray your character and trying to, you know, get it on TV and trying to, um, you know, and creative will, will work with you if they're like, hey, yes, no, we like this. We're going to try to pitch it this way and that type of stuff to try to get you on TV. Because I, I know, I, I mean, I pitched, I was there for eight years and I pitched, you know, anything and everything I could. Yeah. Um, you know, you know, with and so, and sometimes they would just tell you no, and sometimes like, hey, we like that, and uh, some stuff like uh, you know, some pitches you were more passionate about, so I can see like, hey, we really want to try this, and uh, but they would just be like, ah, oh, no, you need to go another way with it and stuff. So that I mean, that's the experience I got with NXT and WWE as well. And I know a lot of people, people that I've, I've even spoken to. Uh, they look at like WWE as the end all be all. Now today it's a little different, having a, a lot of different yeah. options. But people in the past and present they've been very vocal about how, you know, they want to be in WWE, and then when they get there, it's a completely different experience of what they imagined it being. Um, is that something that you could say for yourself? Like, did it really measure up to what you thought it'd be? Uh, well, I knew that, you know, you, like you hear the stories and stuff. So I knew it was going to be uh, kind of chaotic and I knew that <laughs> I was going to have to uh, to roll with the punches and type yeah. thing. I mean, that, that was kind of when, once you get in, in WWE, they, you know, you kind of, they, I mean, I always hear stories, you kind of hit the ground running and you got to be prepared for that because they, they're going to, you know, pull you a thousand different ways. And I, and I think a good measurement of that is when I started uh, there in NXT was the performance center opening up. And there were just so much media for that first two weeks. Yeah. So it would be like, you'll be in the ring training for some like, uh, some, you know, local news. And all of a sudden they will pull you out like, Hey, go in the green room and cut some promos for these people. Wow. So then you go cut some promos. Hey, we're going to need you here in the gym. Uh, you know, we need some people to start working out when we bring these camera crew in. 
So that that was kind of like your my first taste in NXT and WWE. So it was yeah. kind of like, and, and that was something that I expected, you know, because of course of hearing stories and even even when you listen to people's um, uh, stories of just being on the road and, and you know just being a wrestler in general, you kind of know uh, what you're kind of getting, or at least I knew what I was getting myself into once I joined NXT uh, and WWE, and so I that that was. Um, something that I, I kind of enjoyed a little bit. I don't mind a little bit of chaos and it's kind of like fun. Cause then you look back, you're like, Whoa, like that was, I was just <laughs> part of something really, really cool and really special and stuff like that. And you kind of get to meet all sorts of people and you kind of get to tell your stories and, and, and that type of stuff. So yeah, it, it, it was always uh, fun from my aspect. One of my favorite aspects uh, about NXT or is the, the development of tag teams, uh, Blake and Murphy, uh, a very dominant tag team in their time in NXT and eventually, you know, being brought to the next level, you know, with the inclusion of Alexa, what was the idea of uh, including Alexa in the team? Uh, so uh, when Buddy and myself, when we were uh, first, you know, getting together and we got like the matching gear and stuff like that, we were, yeah. we, we were just trying to find, a niche or something to where people can kind of grasp, like just kind of get to know us yeah. a little bit. So, and cause I mean, we, you know, we, we got to wrestle several times, but I think, you know, when people can kind of dive into more buddy and myself, if we kind of got to t- tell our story, like how do we meet and stuff like that. And then I think that was a lot of like, of the creative pitches buddy and myself were doing, we were just trying to like get our stories out there and stuff like that. And then with, us bringing Alexa, I think that just brought a certain uh, level and personality uh, yeah. uh, to the to the team, and so that that was kind of the the goal behind that. And at that time, uh, Buddy and Alexa were dating, and uh, right before uh, Buddy and, and I started kind of tagging, uh, Alexa and him were kind of pitching as kind of a uh, as a team as well. And so um, once we kind of got solidified as a tag we were like hey well you know we were all riding together at that time alexa yeah. buddy and myself and we just were pitching ideas just kind of like hey maybe we, there's something to this and stuff like that and so and that's what we did we had a um at the time there was things got the performance center um you know they were called performance center shows and what it was it was just like a, a show uh kind of like you would see on tv and stuff like that but it was for the creative and triple h's eyes only type stuff yeah. So it was just uh, for newer talent to kind of get on there, to kind of get used to doing uh, camera work, you know, being in front of cameras yeah. and kind of just being part of a show and it just kind of get your reps uh, and kind of shooting your idea and kind of seeing like, like, Hey, you know, it's always, you know, when you write an email to someone, you always get a better idea by showing you. And so that was kind of the, the aspect of that. And that's what we did. We, you know, we had this idea, we went to, um, creative with it and we're like hey we want to show this and we did we got to show that on uh, a performance center show and you know they, they really seemed to like it uh, you know alexa uh, being with us we like i said it brought up our level of personality and stuff and it kind of just fit and um yeah and that's what it went it, we went as with that with that takeover with enzo and Cass and yeah. uh, carmella you know just a just the perfect ingredients, you know, with, with, with Enzo Cass and Carmella and then Alexa coming to help us. And then that, then the ball really started rolling with us. And that ultimately led to uh, you and, and, and buddy winning the NXT tag team titles. Can you kind of bring me back to that moment? Like what, what went through your mind when one, you, f- you found out you, you were going to be an NXT tag team champion, but then when it actually did happen. Yeah, that's uh, it was a surreal moment, uh, a, a place that will always be in my heart and that I would cherish just because I, I got to share it with a friend, yeah. you know, and, and so that was, um, you know, that was, it was a genuine moment in time, you know, because at that time uh, with Buddy and myself, we were, you know, still kind of scratching a claw on a, of staying on TV pretty regularly uh, with, with the tag team division. And so, and when, uh, I want to say a, a week before, uh, Buddy and our and myself at a live event. We kind of got told because we were kind of pitching ideas. We were wearing like these um, uh, kind of like LED mask to kind of like yeah. you know just just trying stuff to kind of like hey you know you know 
anything that when we came out of the curtain, someone would be like, Hey, you know, Oh, I, Buddy and Murphy are, the, are those are these type of guys. Yeah. So we, that's what we were just trying to do. And at that, at that time, a uh, week prior to when we were getting told, we were kind of got a stern talking to about like, Hey, um, you know, you're kind of, you know, you're, um, you're kind of, you know, going outside your lane a little bit. You need you need to stay focused. You just need to work on the tag stuff. Just work on Buddy and yourself. And so that is so we kind of had to start talking to. And then the the next week, that's when we got to TV, and that's when we were told that we were going to win the tag titles, which was an incredible feeling. Yeah, and then and then once we get the one, two, three, and you hear the crowd reaction from it and stuff like that, and you're looking across and you see one of your best friends, you know, it, you, you can't help but just be overjoyed and, you know, overwhelmed by, you know, so much emotion just because uh, with wrestling, this is something that I wanted to do since, you know, you know since I was in diapers. And, you know, this, uh, I, my very earliest memories of me being a kid was you know uh, me watching wrestling and me wanting to be a professional wrestler or me making it to WWE and you know just being a part of uh, you know those champions that came before me as well uh, you know it was just very high accolade for me. And after that that win, I mean, you guys went on to have uh, like a two hundred plus day uh, mm-hmm. reign, you know, with Alexa as well, and eventually Alexa gets split from the group. Um, was there any reasoning that they let you know as to why they were, you know, taking her away? Was she doing her like a singles run? Like what was the original idea yeah. behind that? Yeah. When, when we were told like, Hey, we're, we're going to split uh, Alexa from you guys um, because yeah, that uh, I believe creative. And I want to say, you know, triple H at that time, they, they liked that the attitude and kind of character change that came with Alexa at that time, you know, uh, yeah. Before us, she was kind of the sparkle, uh, sparkle princess type thing. Yeah. And so when they, you know, when she changed that attitude and personality, I think they creative and stuff. They really liked it and really digged it. So they're like, hey, we're going to kind of split her up from y'all. And we're going to kind of keep, uh, we're, you know, we're going to kind of let her go as her singles run, in which we were very happy for. Like, yes, you go out and you, you become the star that, you know, that we all know that you can be. Uh, about that time, a buddy and myself, we weren't real sure. Uh, what what was in store for us? Because a lot of at that time in NXT, you kind of had your championship run, and once you had that championship run, you um, you kind of get called up to Raw or SmackDown. Yeah. And so um, you know we had the you know we we, we dropped the the titles to the Vod Villains, and we kind of had our return match and and that stuff. And so uh, then uh, they were splitting Alexa from us up and so then but we never just like you know we just never progressed and we were just kind of like you know they didn't know i was like we didn't know like what are we going up are we staying here are we going to further into and then we just started to notice that you know other tag teams were coming along at that time they were kind of getting this you know the storylines and stuff like that and so we uh you know so uh, you know murphy myself we just started kind of asking like well what what is what's next for us? Are you know? Are we getting moved up? Or are we not? Are we staying here? Are we are we going to get the storylines and stuff like that? Yeah. And we never and we never got a clear answer. Uh, you know, we just never got the like, oh yes, we're we're keeping you down here, or no, uh, you're not going up. We want to you know do this and that. It wasn't until a couple of TV tapings that you know, a buddy and myself, we started noticing that like, hey. Blake, you're going to wrestle this person with the singles. And then Murphy, you're going to wrestle this person as a singles. Yeah. And we just find we're like, oh, and so we were just like asking, like, wait, are we a tag? Because on live events, we were still working as a tag, you know, but then um, and then we were finally told after quite some time, like, hey, uh, we're splitting y'all up. Um, you know, uh, Murphy and myself, we, we pitched a match for each other, our best of two out of three or, yeah. or, or five series with us. Uh, um, but they 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 uh, didn't want that because they did, they said they didn't want one tag partner to get the leg up on the other, uh, which was what we saw. So we're like, okay, he said, well, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna kind of split you all up, and y'all gonna come your own different path. And that's when um, you know it looked like Murphy and I were gonna have a match, but then yeah. Samoa Joe came out and destroyed both of us, and then uh, and then we started you know kind of going our own way single wise. 
Yeah, and from that point, they kind of, I mean, it, it felt like they kind of left you in limbo there where you weren't really on TV. You were doing some promo work here and there. Yeah. There wasn't necessarily like a character on screen, you know, uh, a consistent character, so to say. Yeah. Uh, and eventually, you know, you were just off NXT. Was there any any idea uh, like what they were expecting, uh, what you were expecting them to do for you? Like what was the next move? So, uh, yeah, at that time, once it uh, split Buddy and myself, I, you know, I, I kind of go back to the drawing board. Uh, I know Buddy, he, um, you know, he started kind of pitching him going to 205. Yeah. And so he started, you know, so he started dropping and got himself into incredible shape. And he was pitching for quite some time to him to go down to 205 live yeah. at that time. And then, uh, you know, so I, and I, at that time, I, I felt like, you know, with NXT, I was, man, I was like, man, if I could be a, a heel here, I feel like I can be put with some really great talent and have some really good matchups. And so I just started playing with characters, uh, of real like heelish characters and type stuff. And then I already kind of got, you already kind of got the heel stuff from Buddy and myself anyway. So I think it was like going to be an easier transition for me to kind of, you know, play that heel role uh, with people coming in. And yeah, and that's when I just started pitching a character wise, uh, just beautiful Blake character, uh, you know, and, you know, this kind of self absorbed this guy, you know, threw streamers out on his entrance to kind of, you know, yeah. to uh, glorify himself and throw a party for himself type thing. And, you know, I was just kind of like putting pieces together here and there. Uh, you know, looking back, I, sh I should have probably did uh, better. Uh, of, of putting the whole thing together and then presenting it to them. But it, it, I felt like I just kept putting, oh, slap a piece here, slap a piece there. And I just never yeah. really presented the full package to them. And so I did that for uh, about a year uh, you know, down the NXT of, the, of trying to just get like traction to get on TV and stuff like that, uh, pitching this idea. And it wasn't until the end of 2016, we had an Australian tour at the end of that year. And uh, when I got on that tour, uh, a couple of the coaches let me know, like, hey, uh, you can do this character for this for this tour. But once you get back, uh, you need to start thinking of uh, other ideas because we're, uh, you know, we're about to present a character once with the new year, um, you know, this character from uh, with another person uh, in Velveteen Dream. So I said, so I said, OK. And then once I got back. Uh, to the States after the Australian tour, the, the first person I called was uh, Steve. And I just like, hey, um, you know, would you be serious about uh, being in a tag team with me? And, of course, he was 110% in. And that's when me and him, we started getting the gears rolling on the kind of tag team and kind of the presentation that we wanted. Yeah. And I remember reading about, you know, you, you and Steve being a tag team, not really being on NXT, but kind of building, you know, the dark matches, things like that building mm -hmm. towards that and then we see a forgotten sons promo come up and you know we start getting the the vignettes for it when was uh jackson Riker added to the group was that something you guys initially uh had an idea for like a third member or was that just from them saying you know we're gonna put him with you guys no that was that was from them from creative um yeah because steve and i pitched us uh for a while uh, just uh, us as a tag and yeah. us kind of with the forgotten sons type stuff so i at first, when we pitched the Forgotten Sons, it was just Steve and myself, and we were kind of, you know, and they kept, you know, like you said, we we kept pitching ideas, and we kept, you know, trying to create uh, this kind of aura about ourselves, you know, with, with with what we wanted to be portrayed as, and kind of what the look that we wanted and stuff. And they liked it all, and it just it just seemed like they they were one they they were just missing something from us. I, I remember. We had a, uh, we was kind of like our, our debut. It was in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, that our tapings got moved to Atlanta, Georgia, at that time because Full Cell was being used for something else. Yeah. So this, this was uh, Steve and I we were doing going to do a get over match, and we were going to cut a promo uh, announcing ourselves in the Dusty Rose Tag Team Classic. Uh, so you know, we go out there, we had the match, we cut the promo, and then we kind of get back, and uh, we could just tell from people from creative and stuff, they're just like. Mm. Uh, we don't know if we want to go that route. And so later that week, uh, we got, you know, we're told by one of the head writers there in NXT, like, hey, the whole thing got scrapped. Uh, is it nothing that y'all did or anything like that? You know, we were kind of told 
we didn't want y'all to uh, be entered into the uh, Dusty Tag Team Classic and then kind of y'all like get beat or anything like that. We we kind of want to build some steam behind you. So yeah. that and so that's the reason why they kind of scrapped that at that time uh, but then uh you know then we were still working live events and i want to say it was uh steve carino uh told uh steve and myself like hey i think i think if we put Riker with y'all i think that could be something so we did a couple live events where Riker was with us um and, you know of course being you know our heater on the outside and that's when uh you know, they, they took a look at it, and I think that's when they're like, okay, we got something here. We, we can use that. And I, I want to yeah. say that's when, you know, that's when they kind of start doing the vignettes and shooting stuff with with all three of us. Yeah, and eventually from there, you guys get the call that you're going up to SmackDown. Uh, we see the vignettes play out on, on SmackDown. What was your reaction to finally hearing that, you know, there is a direction, but you're also going to be on the main roster? Uh, I it, it, oh just an overwhelming of emotion. It, it was such an, a great moment in my life. I'll never forget it because we were at uh, you know uh, the TVs that day for NXT. Uh, Steve, myself, and Riker. You know we 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 were in NXT. Uh, you know we got to do some cool stuff. You know we yeah. we kind of we kind of felt like we could have done a little bit more. And we we're just trying to figure out. You know, Steve, Reich, and myself, how we kind of get into that main event role of like, hey, we're on TV every week. And uh, so we were, uh, you know, kind of talking to Triple H. And I think Triple H at that time was, um, you know, he's like, he was a hearing from Shawn Michaels at that time. They were kind of like trying to uh, turn us baby face at that time. Yeah. And there was like, hey, you know, if we, if you're paired with the right uh, tag team, we heard that y'all can be baby face pretty well. And so that was what we were told uh, creatively, like, oh, okay, so we're going to be NXT, but we're going to kind of tr- uh, kind of transition over to a babyface role. And um, and so we were kind of going to go into a Grizzly Young Vets. And then at that uh, day at TV's, uh, Matt Bloom and, and Triple H uh, called us over, pulled us over to the side. And we just thought it was going to be something through creative or something like that. Yeah. But, but then Triple H kind of told us, like, hey, uh, you, you know, you kind of won't be here anymore. And wow. we all three kind of looked at each other like, what, what, what do you mean? We're not going to be here. <laughs> yeah. And uh, he goes, no, he's like, uh, he's like, I just want to congratulate you all that we're going to move you all up to uh, SmackDown. Wow. And, of course, all three of us were ecstatic, you know. And it, it was just very cool, you know, because the way he was presenting it, he was like, yeah, he's like, you know, we want to move you all up. We feel like, you know, a, a very good – uh, heel trio team will be good with uh, working with the New Day exactly. and even even the Bloodline with Roman and the Usos and stuff like that at that time. Uh, so we were very happy, of course, uh, not only getting called getting the call to go to SmackDown, but also getting to work with such great talent like that. You know, yeah. at, at that time, um, we were we were all excited about that, and so it was very very great uh, time for us to be getting called up. Now you were experiencing this, you know, amazing moment, something you worked towards for a long time, being called up to the main roster. And it's in the midst of a pandemic where there's no fans. It's, it's a yeah. very unique situation. Did that bother you at all? You know, you know, getting to this point and then having no fans and, and things like that, the normalcy that you're used to seeing when you make a debut right. like that. Did, did anything like bother you? Did you feel like anything was missed there? No, it, it didn't bother us. I mean, at that time, it, in that time of the world, everything was kind of, uh, you know, changing and stuff like that. And everything yeah. was kind of getting shut down. So it was very much, you know, just the times that we were in, um, which I guess was coming the new normal, you know, that time. Yeah. I think no one, no one could predict, you know, that type of stuff happening, you know, cause we were told that we would be getting called up, uh, at, at the beginning of March. And we had a scheduled meeting to fly up to Sanford at the end of March before Mania to kind of talk with Vince and creative and stuff like that. Yeah. And, you know, then two weeks later, everything gets locked down. Uh, you know, WrestleMania gets pulled from Tampa and then they have to get pulled into the PC. Yeah. So it was just a kind of like a chaotic time. And it was just like, you know, we were it was just kind of rolling with the punches type thing. Like, oh, let's see if we can make this work. Let's see, you know, um, of course, you know, if it ever keeping everyone safe but kind of keeping everything entertaining and yeah. still doing what we do best is trying to entertain the masses as best we could and so yeah it was just 
uh, a weird time. I, I, I always laugh about it because my very first match in NXT was there at the Performance Center. And the very first one uh, match I get called when I get called up uh, to SmackDown is at the Performance Center in front of no wow. people. So, <laughs> and yeah, it got, it's kind of a thing that goes full circle, you know. So, yeah. um, it, it, so it's kind of funny in, in that way when you kind of look at stuff like that, like, you know, you know, at that time I was with the company for almost seven years. And it's just funny. The very first match you have there was in, in front of uh, 10 to 15 people, your first match. And then all of a sudden you get called up to the main roster and you get to wrestle in front of, you know, in front of the crew, basically, yeah. uh, you know, um, with, you know, just through the TV lens. Yeah. Like a cool, cool, full, full circle moment. Um, but for the Forgotten Sons, you, it looked like you guys were on the path to becoming the SmackDown Tag Team Champions. You you came in, interrupted the New Day. I think it was Miz, Miz and Morrison as well. And it would just seem like a very strong position in the tag team division. Were there any plans, or at least did they tell you, that, hey, you know, we're going to eventually put the titles on you guys? Uh, that was never told to us. We were never told that, hey, we're going to give you uh, the titles. When So when we first got... Uh, up there, you know, we were told like, "Hey, uh, you'll you'll be going in, in to New Day," uh, but yeah. they, they we wanted to go uh, get into something with the Money in the Bank, and that's where it led into the four way with the Ms. Morrison, uh, you know, New Day, uh, Lucha House Party, and ourselves. Yeah, and so it was just kind of like, okay, let's I- I introduce these guys a little bit. But then uh, after the Money in the Bank, you know, uh, we were told by Creative like, "Hey, we're gonna kind of get your stories out there." Which yeah. was great because that was something we felt like you know uh, NXT uh, we we were trying to do and I think you know we we kind of got a little bit of that but now they're like hey y'all are gonna have some promo packaging you know we're gonna kind of get to tell your story stories a bit so we were excited about that and then said then y'all were gonna go into uh, uh, a new day feud which they told us was gonna be like a, a you know because at that time Xavier Woods was out with injury exactly. and I think they were and they were going to we were gonna feud uh feud with them for quite some time to where Xavier would uh come back and then we could have some six six man exchange uh type stuff. Uh but we were never told that you know like hey y'all are gonna win the titles type thing. We were just told y'all would be feuding with New Day. And um you know of course once you know things happen and we kind of got taken out of that spot. Yeah, you know, we saw uh, Cesaro and Shinsuke kind of get put into our spot, and of course they win the tag titles. So yeah. it, it it makes you think like, oh man, if we would have stayed there, that that could have been us type thing. Exactly, and I remember watching those promos every week. They had uh, a different front man tell their story, and it was really like I was really invested in it because I remember watching in NXT. You didn't really get that uh, in depth detail of the Forgotten Sons. You just knew yeah. that what the idea was, but now getting a more mm-hmm. in depth feel. I was completely invested in it. And I honestly do believe it. it you guys were on the path to becoming the yeah. tag team champions because it was just such a strong win, getting wins, you know, over everyone really. Yeah. Um, but during that time, uh, there's like a, I guess you can say a scandal that takes place with Riker posting on social media. Um, what was the instant reaction from you after finding out, you know, all of what was, hap- was happening? Yeah. So I, I mean, at the time I was laying in bed uh, when, you know, and I, I got a couple messages from people from the locker room, like, Hey, uh, you know, kind of, it, th- this is, this is happening. This is kind of what's going on. Uh, so I, I messaged Steve and Riker in, in a group chat and just kind of, and I, you know, Steve and myself asked, just kind of told me, Hey, there's uh, people in the locker room or, or, you know, and not only people in the locker room, but there's people kind of taking offense to, uh, this tweet, would you mind taking it down? And of course, uh, Riker being the man that he is, he said, uh, no, he's like, I would not take this tweet down. So, which respectfully, I was like, okay, you are your own man. You, you do as, but, uh, Steve and myself, we just kind of told him, listen, we are going to put out our own tweets and kind of distance ourselves from you. Mm-hmm. And, uh, w- which he understood. Uh, he goes, that's fine. Do what you have to do. Uh, sounds good to me. And that's what we did. Uh, Steve and I, we, we sent out some tweets, you know, kind of making our own opinion and, and getting our own stories out there. And uh, Steve and I, we went in the next day to the Performance Center and we uh, got talked with Creative. And at that time, Creative told us like, hey, um, you know, we're just going to let this blow over. You know, um, 
you know, we're just going to kind of like let you're going to lay low for two or three weeks. And then we're just going to let this blow over. And then we'll kind of pick right back up where y'all you know, um, started. And so we were like, okay. So initially we, we, we thought like, okay, that was, you know, not the, the best move. Um, you know, that, that Riker made that tweet and stuff like that, but it seems like we're going to, you know, continue on with, with what's going on storyline wise. And then we were told uh, the very next week, like, hey, uh, you know, New Day is going to be in with Shiz- uh, Cesaro and uh, Shinsuke uh, for the foreseeable future. Uh, you know, and I think when that happened, you know, of course, Riker reached out to Steve and myself and, I, of course, apologized. Like, I never meant for this to happen. I didn't want, he said, like, never what I thought to dismember uh, this faction that, you know, that we, that we helped create and stuff like that. So, uh, and and then Steve and I were were just honest with them and we just told them, like, listen, we're going to pitch ideas. And some of those ideas, we're not going to include you in it. It's just going to be Steve and myself uh, as the tag team and type stuff and that type of stuff. So, and, and, you know, and that's the thing we were always honest and upfront with him about like, listen, we're, we're going to try to move forward, but you know, kind of without you or that type of thing. And, it wasn't until probably September uh, where we got a call from creative saying like, Hey, we're going to bring y'all three back as a team, but we're going to switch up your look a little bit. Y'all aren't going to be kind of forgotten sons. Y'all going to, you know, so we did, we kind of, we pitched ideas for them to kind of uh, clean up our look a little bit and, and that type of stuff. But then, uh, then that just kind of uh, happened to fall through. And then it wasn't until December where Riker got moved to raw and Steve and myself, um, stayed on SmackDown. Yeah. And you guys eventually became the Knights of the Lone Wolf being paired with Baron Corbin. Uh, when that was that presented to you, did you guys come like pitch that idea? And you know, what was the, the original direction? Cause that, that little stint didn't really last, you know, that long. No, that, so when Steve and I first, uh, like I just told you, uh, when Steve and I first started, we told Riker like, Hey, we're going to pitch ideas. Yeah. Um, you know, kind of distancing, you know, just Steve and myself, we did pitch, you know, to be with Corbin at that time. Oh, wow. um, but it wasn't until that December where like, hey, I think we're going to go with Corbin and you two. Um, you are going to be kind of like his henchman type thing. Yeah. Uh, you know, and so we, and we were excited about it. We were excited about working with Corbin. Um, this, you know, he's done some incredible work. Um, you know, he's kind of got to be have some cool angles. Like he got to be, you know, with, with being that kind of uh, heel where, you know, you, you're hated, you get to work with a lot of the top baby faces. And so we were really excited to kind of get uh, get to do that with Steve and myself, you know, kind of getting to work with the top heel. And I think we could add layers to Corbin's character, which could have helped uh, add layers to Steve and myself as well. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, like I said, that, that idea uh, of the, the the names and the kind of look and the demeanor that was all uh, from WWE Creative. That so when Steve and I pitched months before, that was not what we kind of, that was not the idea that we were pitching for yeah. ourselves. Uh, when when it was brought to us, uh, you know they they already had the look laid out. They had the you know the the name. They had they had they had it all for us, and they're just hey here y'all go here, you know, we need y'all to do this type thing. And we said, okay. And what was the initial reasoning for, for ending that so soon with, with Corbin? Uh, so with that uh, going on at that time, uh, uh, COVID was going on. And, you know, I, at that time, toward the end of this past year, uh, I want to say the Mysterios kind of came in contact with someone from COVID. So that kind of kept them off TV. Yeah. Uh, Murphy kind of came in contact with someone. Uh, with COVID, because that was kind of the storyline we were going to go with. We were going to go with the Mysterios and Murphy at that time. He just got done with Seth Rollins, and they kind of ended that story. Uh, and we were kind of go with, uh, you know, with with the Wolves, you know, myself and Steve and Corbin going against them. Yeah. Uh, but like that stuff just kind of kept halting, you know. So it's like uh, we, you know, go to the TVs one week. Hey, the Mysterios aren't here because I, you know, someone got in contact with COVID. So Exactly. We're just going to kind of put y'all here. So we're like, okay. And then the next week, you know, the Mysterios are here, but Murphy's not here. And so, the, you know, that kind of, so we're like, okay, we're going to go here with y'all. And then, you know, finally, 
uh, you know, Steve uh, came in contact, you know, Steve uh, ended up getting COVID as well. And so he was gone for two weeks. And at that time when, when Steve got COVID, I, I you know, I, I asked like, hey, do you, you know, still want one wolf out there? Do you still want me kind of, to k- just kind of keep the storyline going, but oh, yeah. than that. Uh, they said, no, if we, if we want you out there, we want Steve and you together. Uh, so at that, so once he got told to take his two weeks, um, of quarantine and then we'll bring you back. And so that, yeah. So I once that, and so I just sat at home, uh, the, during those two weeks during quarantine and kind of just, uh, was waiting for Steve to come back. And then of course, when Steve, when Steve finally got cleared and was ready to come back, he, of course, he got the call saying that, you know, that yeah. he would no longer be needed. Yeah. And, you know, eventually you got a similar call this year, uh, mm-hmm. being released by WWE. Was there yeah. uh, an initial like shock? Was there anything you were kind of expecting, like not really knowing what was going on? What was your initial reaction to, to have it, everything happening? Uh, initial reaction. I, uh, so when Steve got let go, um, I kind of had in the back of my mind. That like okay if they're if they're letting Steve go I, this uh, possibly could be uh, yeah. letting me go as well you know because they told him their uh, creative had nothing for him uh, when he got let go so in the initial I mean that, you know when that stuff happens when when you're part of a tag team and yeah. that type of stuff and someone gets let go you're like okay well you know how long is it going to be before they you know but once that happened I I you know I told myself well don't give them a reason to let you. So you, you know, so I didn't, I, I started pitching stuff right away. Like, Hey, um, you know, even I, I pitched stuff well uh, with Corbin and using someone else, uh, as a night of the long, uh, of the lone wolf, you know, maybe me and someone else, I, you know, that we could do that. Um, buddy and myself, uh, coming back together to tag again, you know, uh, we, we could have done that. Cause at that time, once, uh, Murphy kind of, got in contact with COVID, he kind of got taken off TV and was just kind of set aside. Yeah. So me and him started pitching stuff. And so I, ju- I just kept on letting the wheels go like, okay, like, listen, I'm still here. I, I can still be useful. I can, you know, I can be used in so many different ways. And, uh, but ultimately their decision was after man to let me go. Of course. And, uh, you know, earlier in the year when Mickey James was released, uh, she brought to light, you know, the trash bag incident that WWE was sending out, uh, trash bags of, you know, the belongings of superstars they let go. Um, something that apparently has been happening for a long time over there. <laughs> uh, when you were released, did you experience anything similar to that? Or was it, what was the exit process uh, when you left? No, I, at that time, I didn't have any uh, gear or anything there at the, at, at the stadium or anything like that. I said, I always, ha- I always bring my gear. I, I'm always very leery of, of, of leaving my stuff there. Yeah. And, uh, and stuff like that. So, I mean, I always, I always travel with, with my gear and it always comes with me and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but when, when I got let go, I, um, you know, it, it was very nice. It was very cordial. It was just kind of like, Hey, we're doing budget cuts as of right now. Um, you know, but they, when I talked to them, they kind of kept the, they, they kept the, like where the door would be open, like, you know, maybe in a year or two, yeah. Uh, hopefully we, you know, once kind of maybe stuff gets back to normal or that type of stuff, maybe we, you know, the door is always open for you. So that was kind of the talk that I got. Like I said, I, you know, I feel bad about, for what's happened to Mickey James and so many others that, you know, that had the experience that, um, but with me, I, it, uh, I, I didn't, I didn't experience any of that. It was very nice, very cordial when I got the call. And now on Raw, we see, you know, Riker being positioned as a baby face, gaining mm. some momentum there with Elias. Is there any, like, feelings that you have towards that and seeing that, you know, happen now where you, know, you were once a part of the group with him and, and not anymore? Uh, no, no, I, I, you can't, you can't uh, dwell on that. You can't yeah. sit there and, and, and be negative or bitter uh, towards any of that. You, have to, you know, you've got to sit there and keep striving to make yourself better. Um, yeah, because there, there's there's absolutely nothing that will come out of me being angry or, or bitter towards that, you know. And so, you know, I, like I said, when when it first happened, uh, we automatically uh, try to move forward from it and try to get ideas going and stuff like that. Uh, what, what you know, with what he's doing in, in WWE, that's you know, that's 
between uh, him and WWE and their plans that they see forward in that. And I, that's nothing. There's nothing that I can do or nothing I can say about that. It, I only thing I can really uh, control is what I can control. And so now it's just me uh, putting out content for myself that, you know, that I, I like and I enjoy doing and hopefully uh, a company or a promotion sees it and hopefully they can see some value in myself. And, you know, hopefully I can um, be brought on to a team or a promotion and hopefully I can help them elevate their um, status as well as um, elevate my own as well. Of course. And then speaking of that, we see Steve now in Impact Wrestling, mm -hmm. buddies on the market as well. Is there any interest to either maybe get back to a tag team or, you know, go for that singles run that, you know, that you could possibly, you know, do anywhere else? Is there any interest yeah. from you know any of the companies? Yeah, I, I mean, that, that's the great thing about this, the future right now, because like you said, like Steve's at Impact, you know, Buddy's uh, just got released as well. And the, the opportunities and stuff like that are just, uh, you know, endless as of right now. Uh, you know, it, it, I, would, I would love to love the tag with Steve again. I mean, that, that was some of the most fun, fun times I've, I've had because it was just it was like getting to wrestle with your brother, uh, you know, so just doing that and getting, you know, I would love to wrestle with Murphy again, uh, uh, you know, a tag in or even wrestling him singles, you know, kind of get our, our match or our two out of three matches that we kind of wanted to pitch uh, years before, you know, and, or a singles run and stuff like that. Like I, I've always had a, a thing in my heart about tag team wrestling. It's just something that I, I, I grew up watching and grew up. I love, uh, love I just you know love the spectacles I didn't I just love the aspects of tag team wrestling there's just so many more uh, things you can do uh, you know that to make the match very exciting and stuff like that but you also I also love the, the singles wrestling because it's a, more of a story between you and a competitor and it's just more focuses on you yeah. type thing like that and it's, it's just it creates all sorts of, of great elements that that I I love about wrestling and stuff like that and I and, and, and that's the thing that I'm looking forward to. And it's, you know, if someone wants to uh, reach out or, you know, a company wants to reach out or, you know, with whatever ideas or whatever, I hope to, I can help out in any way I can and try to elevate, like I said, their company and also elevate myself as well with working with so many talented people because there, there is uh, at this time now, uh, you know, stuff is kind of opening back up. Uh, and there's just so many places to go uh, with wrestling. You, you know, you have the Impact, the ROH, you have AEW, you have New Japan, you have like NOAA, you have uh, NWA, you have MLW, you have all these type of, you know, you have all sorts of companies and they're all their rosters are stacked full of talent, uh, you know, uh, men and women, uh, tag teams. And it's just very, a very fun time for us being a performer. And I'm really interested uh, or intrigued um, about the process of you being that you were in NXT and WWE. For you, what was the biggest difference between being involved with both? Uh, biggest difference? Um, I, I mean, the I would say uh, NXT. Well, you know, they were they were trying to groom you for at that time when I was coming. They're trying to groom you for getting up. To the main roster to where it wasn't so much like a a, a big um pendulum switch because you know nxt at that time was just uh, filming on a full cell and stuff like that and so and they were just doing shows there in florida but then nxt started to transition you know they they, they started going to bigger arenas and they started putting on you know they started doing the takeovers which were like pay-per-views you know, yeah. and they start getting in front of larger crowds and stuff like that. And that's when you saw NXT kind of shift into where it's like, okay, you know, I mean, you know, before when you were in NXT, or, you know, at least for me, you could have been in Palaka, Florida, you know, in front of 40, 50 people. And yeah. then you get called up the next week and you're going on a, a live event uh, for WWE and you're wrestling in front of 10,000 people. And you're yeah. just, you know, that can be sometimes overwhelming, you know, at least it would have been for me uh, yeah. anyways. But with NXT and stuff like that, it, it did a great job of transitioning in me uh, to get ready for that. Um, you know, and then, of course, with that transition, 
uh, finally NXT got a USA deal, which went to live TV. So there was no more tapings. And so then you get that live aspect in which, in which is another way of helping uh, talent get to, you know, transition over to Raw and SmackDown. And now NXT is right there with Raw and SmackDown. It's a, re- you know, a regular program that you see uh, every, every Tuesday now. Uh, and, and so now it's just one of those things that it, it uh, you know, that just morphed into this monster that, you know, that, you know, NXT that was once a developmental that was kind of getting you ready for the for the big time for the big show. And now it kind of became its own show. Yeah. No, it's really interesting to, to see that. And uh, for the fans watching now who, who know you as Wesley Blake, you are now uh, Weston Blake. And yep. you can give us a little insight because we've seen the, the, the vignette or promo video vignettes, you could say, uh, mm-hmm. on social media, um, getting ready to get back. That July date is coming up very soon. Can you give yeah. us some insight as to what we can expect from you uh, going forward? Oh, man. Uh, uh, hopefully I, I get to just uh, showcase and entertain uh, the people and hopefully just put uh, a smile on your face. Or if you hate me, uh, hopefully you boo, boo or spit in my face. Either one um, works in that because that, that's what I, I, I've always wanted to do. Um, you know, one of the, the proudest things that I, that I – I like was when Steve and I in that ladder match at NXT TakeOver 25 was uh, the simple fact of me and him climbing the ladder and people were just booing us, just booing yeah. us out of that building. <laughs> and it was just a satisfying as, as, as when your music hits and there's a huge pop to me, uh, yeah. just because it, you know, you work hard. It, it just, it just felt like it was natural and organic and people did not want to see Steve and I win. And it was just like that. It, it's just very comforting knowing because it seemed, you know, a lot of people, they, they like getting cheered and they like, you know, they, they like the immediate response, but man, there's something about when people are getting booed uh, that just really, you know, ignites your fire of wanting to, you know, do better. And I, I, and with me, I, I, I always go out there and give 110% on, on, you know, if, whether it's a live event or a TV show, I'm just hoping uh, coming up, I, I just get more opportunities to kind of show um, yeah. myself and my story and, and, and my wrestling uh, ability and kind of get to show my wrestling style and get to work with different people and everything. And just hope I, I can, uh, you know, leave a lasting impression that I hope inspire other people to either pursue wrestling or pursue you know, whatever they is they are in life, you know, um, you know, whether, you know, if you're, want to be a coach or if you don't think that you're going to, you can make this profession or don't think that you can do something that you can watch these performers or watch myself on TV and hopefully strive to, you know, uh, uh, do better for yourself. Of course. And for all the, the people watching and listening right now, where can they get more of Weston Blake? Where can they follow you or, or find you? Yeah. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at the Weston Blake. Uh, right now I'm working, um, with some design people that can try to start getting some t-shirts out there. Um, you know, I'll try to get, uh, some more content out, uh, right now I'm, I'm trying to, you know, and maybe in the works with like maybe uh, starting like a, a YouTube channel or something like that to where I can get more content out there of getting more, uh, uh stories and people's other stories out there as well. Uh, but right now you can go to, um, at the Weston Blake, uh, for Twitter and Instagram. And if you're looking for any business or booking uh, inquiries, you can go uh, book Weston Blake at gmail.com. Of course. And, and Weston, it's, it's honestly been a, an honor and a pleasure to sit here and talk with you. You have such a positive mindset for, you know, everything that's gone on, not just the pandemic, but in your, in your career as well. And I really do respect that a lot. And uh, I'm really excited to see what comes next for you because I know there's big things ahead, especially with that July date coming up. I mean, I'm excited for the future and I can't wait to see what you do. Me too, man. Me too. So yeah. And thank you for talking to me and thank you for uh, taking the time uh, to interview me and listen to uh, me kind of uh, shoot the shit. Of course, man. I appreciate it. And uh, we'll stay in touch and hopefully we can do this one more time down the road. Yeah. I would love that. And before you go, don't forget to like comment and subscribe down below to stay up to date with the next big interview right here on the angle podcast.